In today's episode, I go for a run, explore the fan village, enjoy the musical entertainment and hang out with royalty. Oh, we watched a bit of rugby too, although it all got a bit much for one of us. My name's Tim Tunnicliffe, host of the Amateur Rugby Podcast, and I'm here in France to show you the entirety of the Rugby World Cup. I'll be travelling the country, hitting the fan zones, showing you the in-stadium experience and getting the lowdown from all the talking points from what is sure to be an epic World Cup. Yesterday, I drove the 800 plus kilometres from Paris to Marseille. I witnessed the incredible pre-match atmosphere. And there was despair and joy in the stadium as England played Argentina. Morning, folks. Match day three here at the Rugby World Cup 2023. I'm here in Marseille. Look at that, what a park up spot. And I feel like I've got some energy today for the first time this trip. It has been a tough schedule I've set myself. Paris for the opening night in the fan zone. Then here in Marseille, an eight hour drive yesterday. Absolutely exhausted when I got here, but fortunate enough to get a ticket to get in the game. And it's a hell of an atmosphere, a hell of a stadium. There's a few people kind of scarred from the fan experience though. It was pretty dangerous outside the front of there last night. Fortunately, I was with a group, we went around the back and it was a lot more chilled, but the scenes out the front, I think there was a lot of people got a bit scared. I'm trying to think it through, maybe the French just used the stadium in a very different way to the English and Argentinians. It's possible that the French just sort of like file in hours in advance and there's never really big, a big build up of people or something like that, who knows. Now I've just done what I like to do and I've been out for a mega run all the way along the coast there this morning. I'm going to be doing it all the while in this Rugby World Cup Sunday run day. Come and join me. I'll be putting posts up on Facebook. And today feels like it's going to be, I don't know, somehow the first proper day for me. Like, I've been racing around, chasing my tail a little bit. Missed three of the four games yesterday because I was driving down. But today we got three games. We got Japan versus Chile at one o'clock. South Africa versus Scotland, which I'm really looking forward to. Mid-afternoon and then this evening, possibly an even better game, Wales versus Fiji. So big day here at the Rugby World Cup, repping the My Name's Doddy Foundation. After a hot, sweaty run, there is only one thing for it. Right, go with some rugby. <laughs> I grabbed a scooter and headed down to the Escal Borrelli to catch up with friends and watch the first game. So a lovely lunch here in the fan zone by the seaside and I've got Ian with me to talk about the big talking points from last night. Evening. And we're going to start with getting into the stadium, which caused a few issues. So how, how was your experience? It's an omni shambles classified. Would you Sorry. like to give some more detail? Uh, yes. Uh, so we got, we got to uh, within 200 metres of the stadium at about 10 past 8. An hour-ish, plenty of time to get in the stadium, so we thought. 10 minutes before kickoff. We were still on a set of steps, thinking about 80 yards wide, uh, no crowd control, no support, nothing. Just a mass of thousands of people outside the gate trying to get in. It was um, fun because it was a nice crowd, dangerous if you were unsteady on your feet, if you were older, if you had kids, I'd have been petrified. It was a, it, it was a nightmare waiting to happen. They were lucky nothing went seriously wrong. I was lucky I went in the back, so it was it was much safer, but it was, it was still very badly organised. Now, the other thing was uh, lack of beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, we got in. It was a bit fraught when we got in. I, I managed to get in to see kickoff, but I wasn't at my seats yet. There were thousands of people behind us. They wouldn't have got in yet. Uh, at half-time, thought, right, I'll go for a beer. We'll chill. It'll be good. We'll, we'll, we'll make this up. Uh, 40 minutes later... Having had a machine that's broken, staff who don't know how to pour beer. Um, oh my God, the thousands of fans that stadium had left untaken last night was phenomenal. Uh, it was a really, really bad shit show. Having said that, French people in the crowd, Argentinian fans, awesome, seats were great, stadium looks nice, but just omni shambles of a shit show for organisation. Now then, what about the game itself? What do we think, first off, about the red card? The red card, I didn't see it, because I was still trying to get to my seat. Uh, a lot of people have said that it's essentially uh, the person catching the ball, headbutting Tom Curry. I don't really buy that. I think the onus is very much on the defender these days to not get into a shit position. Overly keen, head-on-head contact. It's a no-brainer. He's gone. 
England dealt with it exceptionally well then. Yeah, exactly. Now tell me a little bit about how England did deal with it. What, what, what did we do? Mindset went straight into defence, straight into clarity of purpose, clarity of operation, forwards fronted up, defended well, George Ford, Maestro, game-defining performance. We all know he can play, we know he can control a game, he did just that. And some of the technical execution of some of those drop kicks on the back foot for a significant distance. Mucho kudos to that man. What amazing sound boats from Ian Mack here. What are we going to think? What do we think about the game this afternoon? South Africa, Scotland, what are we seeing? Oh, I'd love Scotland to do it right. They've got the game that can put South Africa out there. They'll pivot quick. They won't want to get tied into a slugfest. In Finn Russell, they've got someone that can distribute. I fear, though, South Africa looks strong. Yeah? They're bomb squad, they're forwards. They're just going to squeeze and suffocate the game. If it's hot and Scotland can move them around, there's a chance. And I kind of want them to do it. If it's not, they're going to get squeezed, squeezed, and South Africa will win. We're all hoping for the underdog here. There's a chance. It's not a big chance, but there is a chance. We then got handed free beer tokens for a pool bar, which had live music, a party atmosphere, and even some celebs. <laughs> The old town was calling and, well, I stopped taking any footage at that point. South Africa squeezed Scotland, just as Ian had predicted, but then it all got a bit too much. And to be honest, I was close to falling asleep in the sun too. The evening progressed to a lovely meal and sporadic watching of Wales versus Fiji. I eventually found my record button for the dying moments of an epic game. What do we think, guys? Come on, Fiji, you can do it! <laughs> Come, Come on, Fiji, you can do it! Come on, Fiji, you can do it! The World Cup has been brilliant fun so far, but I haven't watched a huge amount of rugby. I hope to get that right in the next episode. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it, and give this video a thumbs up while you're down there.